how to your notes. Um, one point um, one. And then you could say, um, and 1.1 1 .1, um, was the two question of calculus. So first question of calculus, who remembers? We're trying to find the instantaneous rate of change. And that ends up being the slope at one point. Two, um, which is the second half of calculus, we will be looking for um, area and volume uh, of just shapes that are not concrete, like circles, triangles, rectangles, um, shapes that are just irregular. So it could be like the area underneath a X square. That's not really like a rectangle or a triangle. It's, it's a different shape that we have to find the area of. And so the answer to this, both of those, is what? Is this concept of limits. So that's where we get into um, in 1.2. That's all we really need for 1.1. That is what calculus is about, two questions. OK, so um, in 1.2, our goal now is to really just study limits. So we're going to try to find limits uh, in two ways. And we're going to try to find limits um, numerically. And graphically. So numerically is just how our book says, oh, let's find limits using a table, an input output table. And graphically is just, oh, what if we take a look at the graph of a function? What is the limit? So that's our goal for today. But let's define what a limit is. OK, so the limit is this concept about uh, approaching. So um, it's this concept of approaching. And um, it says we can approach something but never get to it. So we're always approaching um, something here. And then um, let's see, we have a notation for it. We abbreviate it as LIM. And then we have an X that goes somewhere. We'll have uh, C. C is a constant. It's going to be a number. There's our equation. It will equal something. We'll call it L just because our book uses these um, notation. So we'll break this down. Um, this is a constant. This is a variable we can use just to say um, you know, it could be 3. As x approaches 3, or as x approaches 0.7, this is our equation. Like, our in our equation, it would be um, x squared. And then this is uh, what the limit is. So in a way, it's um, when you read this, you would say um, it will be read the limit as x approaches um, c is l. So 
So to find a limit, we're just trying to figure out what the y value is as the x value approaches something. So your solution to a limit is this question. What does the uh, what does the y value So when you're asked to find a solution to find a limit, to evaluate a limit, that just says, what does the y value appear like it is approaching as x approaches some constant called c? So um, to do this, we, we're going to start with the first two methods. We'll do a table first. And um, oh, let's define how we could tell if a limit exists. So, oh, you guys done with this one? Okay, so a couple more notation. A limit exists if two things happen. So, um, first, you need to check your limit as x approaches some constant c of some function. And you have to check your limit coming from the left. So so when th there's a little minus up there, you're, this is the left limit. And it has to equal something. And then you have to check, well, what about coming from the right. So the right limit. And um, once, if the left limit and the right limit equals the same constant, say L, then you combine those two concepts and then you write this statement without the, without the, the little plus or minus. And this one without that little plus or minus says the limit exists and equals L. And is L too. So if you write a statement that does not have the plus or minus, you're saying that the limit already exists but if they say show that this limit exists, you must first check the left limit. Then you're going to check the right limit. And then you can write your stronger statement without those and say, oh, I now know the limit exists because the left limit equals L, the right limit equals L. So it makes more sense when we actually go and do this. So we're going to use a table and to demonstrate this. This is just your notes. So whatever we get done, we'll just um, put it into our binder, but I have a table. And the question is, what is the limit as we approach one, as x approaches one of this function, which is given as a table. So what you want to do is check from the left. So um, you're going to say, well, the limit as x approaches one from the left, And how you check is you really just look at coming from the left. X is coming from the left this way. 
the solution is a y value. So you're looking at your y value. Um, now you want to block this off because you actually don't care about does it exist there. Okay, just looking at the left. Again, I said calculus is about guessing. So we just need to make very good guess. I'll pass this one out too. And so, um, let's see. My good guesser, Sarah, what's your guess coming from, what's the left limit? Three. Three. It's 2.7, 2.9, 2.997. Okay. And then we check the limit from the right, but we want to write that little notation. So as x approaches 1, so we're saying, oh, now we're just going to check this way. Hey, Luke, my guesser, what does it look like it's approaching the y value? Three. So if you check the left and the right and they're the same, then you're able to write your answer. And now you could say, well, I now know the limit exists and it is three. But this will be um, how you prove the limit exists. You will say, well, I check the left limit. I check the right limit. It's three. So I'm good to go. OK, so we could try again for the next one. We have another table. And then um, we're going to check. This is a different equation, but now we're going to approach 0. So they want us to check, does the limit exist of some function? This has happened to be its table. So we're just going to say, Let's approach zero from the left. And then uh, take a look at your table. Um, Asan, what are we approaching? It looks like it's approaching two from the left. And then we're going to write another statement. I'm going to come from the right this time. Uh, Olivia, coming from the right, what are you going to? Looks like it's two. Then you write your final statement and without the little plus or minus, and you now say the limit exists and it is two. Okay, so sometimes you guys are given the table and you just have to look at the table. Other times you're given a function and they still want you to use a table, a numerical method. So you're going to make your own table, and you get to choose your values. So for 3, 4, 5, and 6, we're going to just make our own table, and that's where we're just going to input-output stuff on the calculator. So we have the limit, and this time they actually put an equation there, and they said as we approach 1 of this equation, um, what does the y value approach? So when you're asked to do it with a table, and they didn't give you a table, you make your own table. Pick the middle, let x be 1. You don't actually care what the value is there. And then you want to pick a few numbers greater than 1, but you don't want to pick it really far, like 5 or 10. You want to pick right next to it. So right before 1, maybe we'll pick um, 1.0, um, uh, 1, and then maybe we'll do 1.0, two and then 1.03 that's three points kind of fairly pretty close to one on the right side and then on the left side you'll pick some points a little bit less than one and you get to pick your own points so you could say well let's how about i'll pick 0.999 and then um 0.888 and 0.777. And then this is where we're just going to go in and calculate the input output. But I want you guys to do it fast. So what you want to do is you want to just type this equation in. So clear everything out. Just press clear if you see a bunch of stuff. So when you turn the calculator on, this y equals allows you to put your equation, store it somewhere. So y equals, and then just type that equation in, use parentheses, x raised to the third power, minus 1, divided by x minus 1. 
Okay, so I just put that in and then I'm going to have the calculator input output values for me. But I'm going to have, uh, there's a table section here. It's in blue. So to access blue, I need to do second table to get all the stuff in blue. I have to press the second first. Oh, um, it automatically generates it so that the X's are already there and the Y's are there. But I want to tell the calculator that um, I don't want it to automatically generate these. I want to um, I want to actually put in my values. So I'm going to do table set, which is right there. And I'm going to change my input to ask, and then it will automatically put these values in and output my dependent variable in the table. OK, so just to repeat that. I got my equation typed in. I went to table set. I have the independent variable, which are the x's to ass and the dependent to auto. So now when I go to my table, second table, it's blank because I need to tell it that I'm going to put 0.77. OK. I'll, and then I could say 0.888, and I'll output 2.676. So this way, we are not inputting, outputting too long. We want to be efficient. And then I record my values. OK, so again, I put in the equation into y1. Let's change the table set to ass, second table set to ass and auto. Then we go to second table, and then we're able to pick our own value, whatever you choose, 3.030, 1.02, 3.604, And that way, we're just inputting, outputting values quickly. OK, so after you have your table made, you should be able to answer that question now. And so you're going to first check. Let's check the left limit. So you make sure you use the correct notation. The equation is there, so you want to actually write the equation. OK, so then you're just guessing. You take a look at your data. And um, John, what are we getting to? Three. And then you move on to the right. I'm going to now look at my right side. And we're approaching 1. OK, then you look at your data again. And then um, Abigail, what do we get to? Yeah, it looks like it's getting to 3. So once you're done with that, you're just going to say, well, now I know for sure that the limit as we approach x approaches 1 is 3. And that's your answer. Simple, right? OK, so let's try this again for a different function, like this one here. This one asks, um, what is the limit as x approaches 1 again for this function here? So it didn't give us a table. We're going to make our own table. We're trying to figure out what the y value is getting to as we get to 1. And let's just pick the same num the same um, the same value since we're at one we could pick our own value I'm just gonna pick those same ones you get to choose your points very close to one on the left and the right but I'm just gonna choose the same one okay this time I need to put the absolute value function here so we'll clear that out. <clears throat> The absolute value button is actually in the math button if you're using these. So you got to press math. While you're blinking here, you press math. You scroll over and it says um, ABS, press enter. This gives you the absolute value. And then you can type in x minus 1. The x variable, oh, the x value variable is this button. So while you're Cursor is blinking there. You press math. 
and then you scroll over the numbers, and it's that ABS. Then you could say X minus 1. Okay, divide that by X minus 1. Okay, and then just look at your table. Since we use the same X, it should just automatically generate it already. So it says that it looks like from the left, it's negative, negative, negative 1. And then from the right, it's 1, 1, 1. Okay, so now we're going to check if the limit exists. We're going to check from the left of our absolute value function. And from the left, Mika, where are we getting to? Yeah. What does the y value look like it's going to go to? What does your gut feeling tell you? Just a guess. I guess negative one. Negative one. Okay, then you're going to check from the right. So, miles from the right, the y value is going where? One. So now you have to make your conclusion. Does the limit exist? It could only exist if you can make a guess. So, Evan, which is it? Is it negative one or one? Are you? I'm not sure. That's the answer. Because the limit does not exist because you're not sure. you got to be able to guess. And to be able to guess, you just have to check the left and the right. If they're different, then um, the limit does not exist when you're using a table. OK. Um, just let's see. Do we have time? OK. Uh, maybe we'll do. One more table? Or are you guys good with table? OK, we'll do one more table. We've got to get to the graphs. Like, What if we were looking at graphs? Can we still tell if the limit exists? So let's go to this one here. Um, OK, this time we're approaching 2. So we're going to pick 2 in the middle. We won't care about what it actually gets to. We'll pick something um, right uh, very close to it. Maybe these might be my numbers. Um, if we weren't doing this together, you could pick your own numbers. Um, and usually right around this much should give us an idea of what um, we're getting to. So I got to type that in and to this and output my values quickly so I could get um, some y values outputted. So I got my equation in. Um, I'm going to go to my table, but my tables aren't really set up to these. So I have to actually now retype in those values. And then those values here. So record those in. We it was like twenty point one zero seventy nine point seven one nine um, fifteen thousand or so. On the other one, this is like a million here. There's six e sixes. There's six zero and two five zero zero or so. Okay, so we got these numbers. So now I'm checking, as we go to 2 to the left of this equation, what does it look like it's approaching? It got 20, 79, 15,000 or so. So you're going to make a guess. Where does this side go to? Yeah, it's going to go to positive infinity. It looks like it's growing too fast, too large. 
And then we're going to check the other side. Again, it's already getting really large. So you guys would say that one goes to positive infinity also. Now, you can then conclude that um, the limit goes where? Goes to infinity. But the L value that I put in has to be a constant. If it goes to infinity, it actually says the limit does not exist and goes to infinity. You, you could say it goes to infinity, but that's what the infinity means. So this is an example of the limit not existing because it goes to infinity. The limit exists if it we could tell for sure it is a number. It's an L was our constant. So um, on a multiple choice, you would never have does not exist and infinity or a negative infinity. You'll just have one because if you put infinity in, it already says, oh, it doesn't exist. It goes to infinity. And it could go to positive infinity, negative infinity, but you would just say, oh, uh, it doesn't exist and it goes to negative infinity. So for a limit to exist numerically, you just have to be able to guess from the left, from the right. They need to be the same thing and not infinity. All right, so we'll kind of skip this one. Uh, I actually have the graph of that one in a bit for us to look at if we get to. But let's take a look at the graph. And for the graph, I already printed out a couple situations for you guys. So we'll look at the first situation. Um, let's make all those graph the function f of x. And uh, we're interested in only at that instant 2. So this, when you guys take a look at the graph, same idea. You're still going to look at approaching 2 from the left. Write a statement about that. And you're going to trace the dot as you get to 2. And you're going to say, what does the y value look like it's getting to for this one? If we come from the left, it's going where? The y value is going to 1. And if you check this equation coming from the right, so now you're checking the dot, and you're checking coming from the right side, just visually. It also looks like the y value is 1. So then you guys are able to make a statement and say the limit as we go to 2 is 1. It exists, and it is 1. Do you need a... This one. This is the second worksheet. Okay, so second situation. What if we are still interested about going to two again? But it happens that um, there it's not defined at two. So uh, for some of these, if they don't really ask you to. Um, to define if it exists or show, you could just write the final statement. So you're going to take a look. Well, we'll write all the statements here. Even if there's an open dot there, the y value still looks like it's going to 1 from the left. From the right, the y value is still going to 1 even if the dot's not there, so we could still say this one, as we go to 2, it is 1. Okay, so here's another piecewise function where right at 2, the value is up here, 3. And the idea about a limit is we don't actually care what happens right at that moment. That's why in our um, in our table, I linked out the 
the place we want to actually get to. This is the same idea. As we go to two from the left, it looks like we're approaching this one here, not three. The value is up here at three, but the graph, the y value on the graph is approaching one. Same thing with this side. As we come towards two from this side, the y value is approaching one. So the limit exists at two and it is one. Okay, sometimes we have um, situations like this. This time, oh, I think I forgot to fix this, but we're interested in that one. So let's make that one. And so we have the check. The left. Okay, and you're only going to look at the left. So you're going to just uh, eyeball the left, trace it with your eyes, start from the left, and then hit where your X is going, come back. It looks like the y value is going to be 2. And then you check from the right with your little notation. What does the y value look like it's getting to? 3. OK, left is 2, right is 3. So what is your final conclusion? does not exist. If they want you to prove if the limit exists or not, you will prove it this way that says, oh, left limit, right limit. I know that the limit does not exist. OK, um, this is actually the graph of that situation that we had um, on the table. So graphically, it looks like this. And you could see that it's that same statement because coming from the left, It looks like it's going up forever. Coming from the right, it looks like it's going up forever. So left, we're going up forever, right, up forever. We would say the limit does not exist. And so you write a statement without the little plus or minus. And you could either do the limit goes to infinity, which tells us it doesn't exist. Or you could just say, oh, the limit doesn't exist. This is more specific, and then this is more general. OK, here, let's go straight to the answer here. This one wants us to go to negative 3 from the left. It's going to negative infinity. From the right, it's going to positive infinity. So just going straight to your final answer. What would you guys say the answer is? Here, there could, should only be one answer. Yeah, it does not exist. Because the left limit was negative infinity, the right limit was positive infinity, we can't say, oh, positive or negative. We just know that uh, we don't know what the y value is approaching, so it doesn't exist. OK. Uh, some other situation where the limit doesn't exist is these behaviors where it oscillates, like this function. So if you did a table, you wouldn't know what it goes to. If you did a table this way, you still wouldn't know what it goes to. You take a look at the graph, it's doing these oscillating uh, things. And then you could actually conclude that the limit as we go to zero for this function also do not exist. This is the other one we did with the table, but you could see that the left limit was negative 1, and the right limit was positive 1. So you put those two ideas together, and Evan says he didn't know, because he, when you don't know, that means the limit does not exist. Okay, so that means that the big definition is um, 
the limit exists if the left and right limit equal. And so for limits to not exist, it's just when the left does not equal the right. So um, sometimes you guys might see these terms. These type of does not exist. are called jump discontinuities. You can use that as your justification as well. There's a jump discontinuity right at that location, x equals 1. So there's you can see that there's a jump in the graph. And oftentimes, that's going to cause it the limit to not exist because you can kind of see the left won't equal the right. These asymptotes, are, our book calls them the unbounded behavior. So um, you take a look at the graph, you know, right at that spot there, there's an asymptote. It's not bounded. And so it's going to go up or down forever, and the limit won't exist for those. Um, and then these sometimes, um, it's not a dump discontinuity or an asymptote. These are just graphs that um, oscillate. They have this oscillating behavior, and that also caused the limit to not exist. This one, you guys would say, what's the behavior on this one? Right at 1? This is just a jump discontinuity. OK, so uh, behaviors that cause limits to not exist is sometimes we have this jump discontinuity an unbound behavior, oscillating behaviors. OK, so let's do some quick check before um, before you guys go. Just um, so if you notice, we didn't, we're not really going back to the decimal just because we're, we don't have time, but that's OK. There's just a bunch of practice problems I have there, so I'll probably open them up for you to do on your own. But those do not need to be turned in. Let's just run through this really quickly. I got a bunch of mixed pieces here. We got a graph, we got to look at the right spot, and we're going to say, do we know a y value or do we not? So, one, this is telling you we're going to approach negative three. So, you're going to look at negative three. And this one is only the limit from the left because there's a little minus there. So, you don't care about the right. What does the left, the y value look like it's approaching? zero. That's just a statement about left limit. It doesn't ask about the, whether it exists from the left or right. Okay, this one asks about approaching one, but from the right, because there's a little plus sign there. So you're going to come to negative three from the right. The y value looks like it's approaching six. And then three, we're approaching that, but there's no little plus or minus up there. So that means, oh, come from the right or left, do they equal? And when they don't, like this, you'll say the limit does not exist. OK, sometimes you guys will just get this notation. This says you plug in negative 3 into the graph, and you get out what? Right at 3, the value is at negative 4. The dot's there at negative 4. It's not a limit question. It's just I plug into the equation. I got my dot there. OK, so other situations. Now we're interested in going to 5 from the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, from the left, I could already tell it's going up forever. From the right, down forever. So. The limit does not exist. OK, now, what's the value at 5? Undefined. We don't have a y value. Not defined. Undefined is different from does not exist. That does not exist is a limit concept. Undefined is just you are never allowed to use x equals 5 because it's not there. OK, let's check out 1, negative. This is negative 1. So we're going to go negative 1. It's this situation right around here. 
left, that goes to negative 2. Right, oh, that goes to negative 2. So the limit exists, it goes to negative 2. The value, though, at negative 1, what would you say? Open dot means there is also no x equals negative 1 defined. OK, uh, and then one more, and this should close us off. Um, as we approach 2 from the left, so now we're here, uh, 1, 2. It's this little spot here. And then there's a minus there. So I know it's the y value is 1. And then I know the y value from the right is also 1. So this is just 1. And that's it. OK, so we'll just stop it here. Um, I do just post these up later. So I'm going to take a picture. Thank mm -hmm. you.